Hello everyone and welcome back to set to six and in this video we're going to be talking about Zack again. Yay! So the newer Ultimania that has come out recently and the fabulous Itaiki Mochi has again been translating everything and posting it up on Twitter so everyone just needs to show so much love over that way because she's phenomenal and yeah it's brilliant. But yeah one of the things that's been written in the Ultimania kind of goes on to talk about Zack and that final scene that he had, and it's been referred to as Zack's victory. And that's led to a lot of people going along the lines that, yeah, it's confirmed, Zack's alive. Yeah, obviously. I mean, it baffles me. Who didn't think that Zack was alive? Like, seriously, everything that happened at the end of that game indicated that Zack was alive. There was always the very slight possibility that it's a red herring and they were just going to, you know, it was a bait and switch and the game's going to open with Zack getting shot in the back like he did in the original game. That's not going to happen. That That is not going to happen. I, I Even originally, I didn't think that that was going to happen. And being honest, just this being referred to as Zack's victory doesn't mean he's going to survive. He could still walk off and Zack's loss could happen and he gets shot in the back of the head. So, you know, for those of you that are desperate for Zack to die, I still wouldn't say it's 100% ruled out. I, 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 I would still say there's like, what? I'm going to give it a 5% possibility at best that this was just a bait and switch and Zack is still going to die. But I don't think that's the case. But genuinely, they wouldn't do this with Zack. Because regardless of what you think of Crisis Core, I personally am not the biggest fan of Crisis Core. It does bad things to the story. It's not got good gameplay. It's just bad in general. But yeah, regardless of what you think of Crisis Core, Zack is a phenomenally popular character. People who love Crisis Core love Zack. And that makes sense. You know, he's the main character of that story. A lot of people probably started their Final Fantasy VII journey with Crisis Core when it, you know, given when it came out and things like that, it will have introduced a lot of people to the franchise. So I get that there's a lot of people that are desperate for him to live. At the same time, I get that there's a lot of people who are desperate for him to die. People who, you know, you know, people who played Final Fantasy VII originally as their first experience. So for them, and for, well, for us, <laughs> Zack's nothing more than a vehicle to give Cloud additional character depth and story and motive you know he's that he's, he's, he's like that he's like the platform that cloud is built upon and without zach being in that original story in the capacity that he is you lose a lot of what cloud you know why cloud was in the mess that he was how cloud's life ended up in the way that it did but he wasn't an important character beyond that and for a lot of us if he survives and I, this isn't personally me, but for a lot of people, if Zack survives, it ruins Cloud's character to a certain degree. And I've done another video. I don't know what order I'm going to upload these in. The other video is about whether or not Remake is a remake or a sequel. But in that video, I basically say that you need to view this as a sequel. And that would solve this issue because people are saying that Zack surviving, like I say, ruins Cloud's story. But it doesn't ruin Cloud's story if, A, this is a sequel and Cloud's story is already well established because... Looking at the game, yeah, Sephiroth and Aerith are the ones that seem to be having all of the flashes of knowledge. You, you know, they're the ones that seem to know what's going on, especially Sephiroth, because this second Sephiroth's actually come from the future. Like, I, I don't think it's him physically. I think it's his will, and that's why the, the party has to enter into that portal to actually fight Sephiroth. And all the way through the game, other than that, he's just using the Black Cloaks and, like, transmitting his his presence into Cloud's mind in, you know, in the same way that North Crater Sephiroth does, Genova Sephiroth. But Cloud is, he can feel something. There's something going on there. I don't think he knows everything. I don't think he knows anything really, but he's got a feeling like there's some, you get the odd little knowing look from him every now and again. Like even in that final scene where Cloud and Zack, alternate Cloud and Zack walk past him, you can see that his eyes kind of light up a little bit and he seems like he knows something. It might not be, they might have just done that just to mess with us a little bit, but it seems like he knows something. So I would hazard that Cloud's character is, while it seems a lot more violent and unstable in this game due to Sephiroth messing with him from a much earlier point than he did in the original, but I feel like he could be a bit more rounded already as a human because it's all already happened. Like this has all already happened before and he's he's got that high level connection with the live stream, not to the degree that Sephiroth and Aerith have got, but you know, he's up there. So there's every chance that he's going to start feeling things as well. So Zack surviving might not be a massive detriment to him. But then you've also got to realise that Zack hasn't survived in the same timeline as Cloud. I mean, you've got you've got the obvious thing with the Chris packet. You know, it's clearly an alternate timeline. I've done other videos on this. I'm not going to go diving into the alternate timelines thing again. But yeah, Zack's survival won't affect this Cloud in the main story. Not directly, at least. And... 
there's every chance that they'll write something in. I personally feel like we're going to get scenes that are very similar to the ones involving Squall and Laguna in Final Fantasy VIII, where something's going to happen with Cloud. And because of that weird connection that him and Zack have got, which they have got, but because of that weird connection, we're then going to jump into alternate Zack's lie and we're going to see what's going on with him. And it'd be interesting to see what goes on with Zack and Cloud over in that other timeline. To get the best enjoyment out of this remake project, people need to just kind of separate Cloud and Zack a little bit, especially the Cloud that we've been playing as and the Zack that survived in this, what I believe is an alternate timeline. Keep them separate because that Zack isn't going to directly affect the Cloud that we've been playing as. He's not going to change his character. That Cloud, Zack died. That Cloud that we have there, Zack has obviously died because he's got the sword. So at some point there has to have been a death. Now, one possibility is that it hasn't happened in the same way, which is possible. It's possible because we've not seen anything of what goes on. We've not had anything that reveals this Cloud's origin story. We're just assuming that this Cloud's origin story is the same as it was in the original Final Fantasy VII. It's possible that what we've just seen with Zack and Cloud, and I'm playing devil's advocate here because I don't believe this is the case, but it's possible that what we've just seen with Zack and Cloud is happening in the same timeline as Remake, as the Cloud that we've been playing as. If that's the case, there has obviously still been something that's happened to Zack because Cloud's got that sword. Zack would not give Cloud that sword. Like, he just wouldn't unless he was going to die. So, yeah, it, I don't see a way where I can make sense of that, that they are all in the same timeline. But it is possible. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not possible. Again, I'd give this a low percentage of possibility. I feel like I've gone off on a bit of a tangent here now. The, th the point that I'm trying to make is that just because Zack has survived, it doesn't necessarily ruin this story. Because like I've said in the previous video, or the video that's going to come out next, again, not sure on the order, this isn't a remake, it's a sequel. So this is a continuation of everything that's happened before. This is an ongoing story. We've got a Sephiroth that's clearly working with future knowledge. We've got an Aerith that's clearly working with future knowledge. We've got a planet that's trying to preserve what's already happened. We've got proof of multiple timelines pretty much in-game. In, in fact, I mean, we've definitely got proof of multiple timelines. I'm sorry. They've, they've been so... Uh, oh, people should notice that there's a slightly different stamp on the bag of crisps. Oh, yes. And I mean, that's how... Like, oh, I wonder what that's all about. That's how they're being with it. Oh, that could be important. I, like, seriously. That's how they're being with it. And yeah, they like messing with us. They did call the game Remake when it isn't a remake, so it's very possible that they're calling this a big thing when it isn't a big thing. But no. The fact that it's in there, the fact that everything that goes on goes on, it just makes me feel like it is definitely in an alternate timeline that Zack has survived. And yeah, we could still potentially see Zack and Cloud come together, make a sword out of live stream. I can't remember who it was that said this, but it just made me laugh. Make a sword out of live stream and defeat Sephiroth. Yeah, that's always possible. But I don't think they're going to be that heavy handed with it. I really hope they're not going to be that heavy handed with it. I'm hoping that Zack stays in the timeline that he's in. And at the very most, he can maybe, I don't know send some good vibes via the live stream. Who knows? I mean, one thing that could be interesting. I hate saying that word now because I know how much I say it. But one thing that could be interesting is when that Zack in that timeline, if it pans out exactly as I'm saying it does and it's two separate timelines at least, is when that Zack meets that Aerith. So in that timeline, there's got to be an Aerith. And what is going to happen there. Because in Remake, the Aerith that's native to Remake's timeline, whichever timeline that is, she can perceive that things have changed, that things are going to be different, that things should be different in her eyes, maybe, that she needs to do things differently. What if the Aerith in the timeline that Zack survived in can perceive that he shouldn't have survived, that he shouldn't be there? What happens then? I, I mean, there are a lot of story possibilities for it. There's so many avenues that this can go down now, but people should not be surprised that Zack has survived. Like, 100%. That ending indicated that Zack is going to survive. I don't think that they're going to do anything silly. I don't think it's going to be a bait and switch. I think that they genuinely want Zack to be alive because of the popularity of Crisis Core. Like, purely because of that. A lot of people love Crisis Core. So, obviously, you're going to want to try and get that character involved. It feels like this remake project is going to become like an amalgamation of everything in the franchise. So, everything that's come before remake in the compilation is going to be included in some way, shape, or form. Like, Crisis Core was hinted to massively in Remake. You had uh, the 
soldier who turned up who was talking about console you had cloud getting recognized early on in the game like it possibly a lot of people missed it i missed it initially but there's a scene where just before cloud jumps onto the train after the first bombing run and one of the soldiers sees cloud draw that sword and i don't know if he recognizes cloud or if he recognizes the sword but he definitely recognizes something so there's constant little hints you've got the deep ground type facility with the test subjects that's all hinting towards Crisis Core. You've got Hojo talking about SNG type Genova soldiers. That's talking about Crisis Core. So, yeah, I, I don't think people should be surprised that Zach's lived there. Like, I genuinely don't. And it does open up, like I say, a lot of possibilities for the story. Some good, some bad. And it all depends on which way Squeen it's go with it, whether or not we get the good or bad. Let's wait and see. But anyway, I've rambled on enough about this. It, no, I didn't really script this video out. It was a bit of a reaction, everyone, to what I've seen going on on Twitter. People talking about Zach. Um, and I was just amazed that people are so shocked by it. Like, for me, this was just, yeah, he's alive. Let's go. Let's see what they do with it. I just don't get it. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. It helps me massively and I'll constantly be uploading content. So, yeah, don't miss out. But more importantly than anything, have a great day.